Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the 5% series. This is the series where you follow these instructions, you have a fair bit of choice. The goal is you're finishing the top 5%. So we're going to look at how game week 25 went and the plans for game week 26. In game week 27, we're intending to play our wild card. So if you've not been following these instructions strictly, but you think you may want to, next game week's a great time to jump on and join in. And if you want to see what this is about, just watch the video, see the sort of things that we do do every week and how it's going. So I thought I'd start by showing you a couple of teams who have been doing this. So at game week 16, we had the world break and then we had a wild card effectively. And game week 17, we then managed to all change our teams. So Texas T-Rexes, Iota Wolf, they started doing the system from game week 17. So game week 16, you'll see they were just outside the 3 million mark and then they've been following it they've been gradually building up and now they're just outside the 1 million mark which is quite good I mean seeing as this person doesn't necessarily know an awful lot about football they're just following the instructions the idea being they do well in their mini leagues now Sarah Jane B celebrating victory she's actually been on a couple of these videos showing her team for different reasons she has been following this from the start so she was already at 600,000. That's around the 6% mark when the World Cup hit us. And then since then, a bit of a bumpy ride, but the general trajectory has been up. And they're now within the top 3%. And they've only got to finish in the top 5% to achieve what we were saying here. So I just thought I'd show you that the general idea behind this works. There's another two teams that I know have been doing this from the beginning. One of them's around the 6 7% mark. I think the other ones may be a bit lower than that, but they accidentally played their free hit one week. Another week, they didn't watch the video because it was a midweek game and they forgot, I think. So they're not quite in sync. But from next game week, they'll be able to get back in sync again. There are seven teams that have told me they're following this system. And so I'm watching their teams. Four of them I know are religiously following me. Another three are roughly following me, but sometimes they do their own thing. But the following four players are no longer in any of their teams. That's Edison, De Bruyne, Fernandez, and Somerville. So I'll not be talking about them when we look at the points. So bankers, these are players that we all have. Ward, Bueno, Trippier, Shaw, Andreas, Rashford, Martinelli, and Haaland. Something I'm using if you watch other content creators. Two or three weeks ago, just about all of them were saying, yeah, it's worth getting rid of Martinelli to get in Saka or Odegaard. And at the same time, I was saying in one of my videos, I don't think it's worth it. It's like, it's not worth taking a hit. You can just stick with Martinelli. And somebody who semi follows me took out Martinelli, which was unfortunate, as you'll see. So anyway, Ward for most of us started on the bench. Bueno got three. Trippier bench. Shaw bench. Andreas won. Rashford bench. Martinelli 26. And Haaland 10. So if you look at the content creators, they by and large didn't do very well this week because most of them dropped Martinelli, which is a shame. So I'm not saying I get everything right all the time, but it's such an echo chamber, the content creators, where they kind of repeat and follow each other, or so it seems to me. Anyway, the bankers would have got you 40 points. Goalkeeper, you'd have had one of Pope, Ramsdale or Kepper. Pope, of course, didn't play, so if he was your keeper... Ward would have come on. Ward got one point, Ramsdale 13, Kepper 2. So your keepers would have averaged 5.3. Two, everyone would have had two of these defenders probably, but because of the formations, at least one had three of these. So I've put two plus, but you may have had three. That's Ake, Gabriel, Trent, White, Castagna, Tarkovsky. They scored 6, 15, 13, 13, two and zero so that was an average of 16.3 for the defenders for the midfielders we all would have had Salah he got 11 points but he was our captain nearly all of us had him as captain so he got us 22 there was one of the seven I see did go with Saka instead of Salah but for the sake of this scoring I'm going with Salah but Saka was a slightly better choice so 22 points uh, for Salah you would have had one of Saka, Odegaard, Mitoma or Mares. You may have had two, but 
if the, the second one would have been Matoma and he was benched. So Saka 15, Odegaard 11, Matoma didn't play, Mares 1. So this midfielder got you an average of 9 points. You would have had two of these forwards, would have played two of these forwards, probably. But again, formation, some only played one of these because they played an extra defender. Kane, Darwin, Enketia, Mitrovic, Tony, Nonto. They scored 6, 2, 5, 2 and 1. Mitrovic didn't play. So they averaged 6.4. Not so good. But each week, sometimes forwards do really well. Sometimes forwards do bad. It's okay. It's how we do compared to the rest of the 11 odd million that play this that matters. So global average last week for all the millions that are playing it was 74 points. If you picked the worst possible players from this system, you'd have got 69, which happens to be some of the content creators I saw. The average was 99 for this system, and the best you could have got was 129. And the four that I know are doing their best to follow me exactly, their lowest score, I think, was the high 90s, maybe 97, 98. The highest was about 109, I think. So they, their average was just over 100. So they all got green arrows, so that was nice. Thank you very much for everyone who's subscribed to this. If you like this sort of thing, do make sure you subscribe. And if you want to start following, you want to subscribe so that next week you can tear up your team, follow it on, and hopefully we get you, if you're a long way off 5%, hopefully we'll at least get you up the chart, but maybe we'll still get you in the 5%. So last week I showed you this chart from Ben Krellin, and this was the predicted, this was a prediction regarding what teams would be playing. The reason I showed this was to do with where we're going to play our chips. And as you'll see in game week 32, there were going to be lots of blanks, lots of teams potentially not playing. So we were going to dead end into 32, wildcard 33 and bench booth 34. However, because of the FA Cup results, quite a few premiership teams are out of the FA Cup that was unexpected. So this now looks quite different. And I should have given this credit last time. Ben Krellin, if you're on Twitter, it's worth following him and you'll get all these different updates of predicted um, schedule. The predicted schedule of when teams are going to be playing. So this is how it looks now. Game week 26, which is the week we're just coming into, is a normal game week. All teams are playing once. Game week 27, we're going to play our wild card which means most of the players we've got, we can get rid of, bring in as many new players as we want to, and it won't cost us anything in hits. Game week 28, we'll play our free hit, which is where we change our team for just one week. I'm aware of one or two people following this have already played their free hit, which wasn't in my instructions, but maybe they, they found me after they'd already played it, or else I know one accidentally played it. They literally pressed it when they didn't mean to. If you've played your free hit, it just affects which players you choose in 27, but you can still follow this. 29, we're going to bench boost, which means we're going to be playing all 15 of our players in our squad. And then after that, it's pretty straightforward. 32, we just navigate when we get to it, which is there's going to be some teams not playing, but not many. And 34 is now a much smaller double game week. We get some double game week players out that week. So the transfers for game week 26, do not take any hits because you're not going to get it back easily because whatever the team is now, remember, we're starting again in game week 27, but you've all got at least one free transfer. So if you want, you can have a bit of fun and just change one of your players. You've seen which players are in the system. If you want to switch a keeper out or a striker or a defender, move one of them about, that's fine. You shouldn't do any harm. I wouldn't take out Haaland because you've probably got a lot of money in him. Any player you've got a lot of money in, you probably don't want to move on. But obviously, it's entirely up to you. So you've all got one free hit. Sorry, yeah, you've all got one free transfer. Some of you may have two free transfers, but it's not likely. That said, Shaw, who's in this system, he's yellow flagged. So he's a doubt. He'll probably play, but may not. Bueno definitely won't play because he's got a hamstring injury. Enketia is also flagged. So if you're wanting to make a transfer and you've got Shaw or Enketia, they may be the one you want to move on. Bueno is far less important because he'd be last on your bench anyway. But if you want to play about and swap him, you can. So if you want to make a transfer and you want to move on, for example, Shaw or Bueno or any of your other defenders 
that you don't fancy this week. Then there's Ben Mee from Brentford, Dunk from Brighton, or else Mings from Villa. Any of those would be fine. Forward, if you've got Enketia or another one of your forwards, you want to move them on, then you could go for Tony. He is almost certainly going to get a ban, but it's currently looking like it won't be until April, the earliest. Watkins for Villa. He scored in the last four Premiership games. Or Iheanacho for Leicester. They're playing Southampton. They're away to Southampton. But like I said, it's only one week. You could do this if you want to. Regarding the bench, each week we say who should go on your bench. If we get the bench right, the other 11 players sort themselves out. So Ward would be your bench goalkeeper. And then I'm going to show you, I think, nine players now. The first player you've got that I show you should be position number three in your bench. The next one you've got position two. The third one position one. Obviously, there's restrictions regarding you have to play at least three defenders. But the best you can, this is the suggested bench order. Bueno, Nonto, Castagna, Ake, Andreas, Dunk, Mings, Me, and Tarkovsky. Obviously, if you want to move those about a bit, you can. Andreas is a very good player, but those first few have a reasonable chance of getting a return anyway. Regarding captains, it's between Haaland or Saka. So one of these wants to wear the old mule hat this week. Now, the advantage of Saka is he's got the best chance of getting a high score this week. And so he is going to do an awful lot better. However, globally in the whole game, more people will be captaining Haaland. So if you choose Saka and Haaland outscores Saka, it's going to cost you a lot of ranking points. But if you choose Haaland and Saka does better, it would cost you some ranking points probably, but nowhere near as many. Uh, Haaland's at home and they're playing Newcastle, who defensively have been quite good this season or very good this season. Saka's also at home playing Bournemouth, who have been quite woeful. So... If you didn't know what anyone else was doing, Saka's probably the slightly better choice. But given how many people are going to go for Haaland, you're going to be hurt a lot more if you go Saka and Haaland as well. But you don't do it out of fear. You want to choose whichever one you want. If you don't know, flip a coin. It really doesn't matter. Now, if you've got both of these, I'd suggest you make one your captain and one your vice captain. But if you don't have both of those, then for your vice captain choices... I'd say it's between Salah and Kane. If you've got one of those, I'd suggest you give them the vice captain mule hat. But if you have neither of these or you don't want to choose one of those, then any other Arsenal player would be fine. Even if it was Ramsdale in goal, he could get a clean sheet. And I think that's about it. <laughs> so the scores this week, I would expect the average score to be the high 40s, low 50s globally. Using the systems, probably going to be between about 50 and 60 of course some people in your leagues or globally might end up getting 80 90 points and some will get 30 points but there we have it thank you very much for watching i hope you do well and remember next week we should be wild carding so it's going to be a much bigger video but we get to kind of start again okay all the best for game week 26 bye